you can be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. You've got a special treat tonight. You're going to get to hear two mighty men of God preach. And they're both fellas that I think they can back up what they're going to say to us. I, I wouldn't want to meet them in the parking lot. But the power of God has gotten a hold of their lives, has done a great work. Brother Walton is going to come. He's going to minister the word of the Lord. This is a faithful man of God. This is a man that is submitted to his pastor. This is a man that loves the people of God and loves the work of God. You may not know this, and I might embarrass him telling you, but this man, at least the last two years, I believe, has sacrificed his and Sister Josephine's thanksgiving to be here and open the church for anybody that might not have family to come and eat with them because they love you guys like family. That's loving the people of God. This man is faithful to our Panera Bread ministry. He works in McMinnville almost every day, has to drive 70 miles, but a lot of Wednesday nights he goes after we're all in bed and picks up the Panera Bread Drops it off here at the church the 4th of July when the rest of us hadn't even thought about it and we didn't have service. He still went and got the Panera Bread. This is a faithful man. He helps in our, our all of our food ministries in various ways. He's a mighty man, leads our men's fellowships over here at Shoney's. He loves to eat bacon like I do. I was teasing him before service about that message he preached last year about BAM! I just wish the Holy Ghost would get a hold of him and get a hold of us and Bam! Set some people free tonight. What about you? Brother Walton, I want you to come deliver the word God has for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me okay with this? Hello? Test. Okay. 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 I asked Pastor just a minute ago if he wouldn't mind, if it would be all right. Because you want to get your pastor's permission with a lot of things. That, you know, you, you don't want to just do things on your own because you represent God. But God put him over this church, and that's why I was asking if he wouldn't mind, would it be all right if, if he could ask them if they sing that Holy Ghost come on down so. But what I would like is while they singing that, I saw something that it, it kind of disturbed me. And I saw a few people over here, hands up, praising the Lord, and then it kind of disappeared in here. Then you had one or two there, and then it was just kind of empty over there. And 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 I know everybody was standing and praising the Lord. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's got a certain way to praise the Lord. But the Lord just put something up on me when I was over there standing and, and talking about, come on in, come on down. And, and, and I just got to waving my hands to the Lord, come on in. We, we welcome people into our home. We stick out our hand. And say, come on in. Thank you. Welcome to the church. Welcome to our home. But we, we asking the Holy Ghost to come on down and come on in. We don't welcome him in. We just kind of we just kind of stand there still. And oh, let the Holy Ghost come on. And 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 and, and, and a lot of you are younger than me. I'm gonna tell you right now. But I see I'm seeing the older people at least raising their hand a little bit, you know. But but some of you know, we need to get out of the stiffness and scared to raise our hand for Christ. Because I, I know that's what it is, because I was in that position, scared to say, praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. You know, we go up to people and say, God is good and Jesus is great. And people laugh and giggle, and especially our younger generation. And, and, and if you want them to worship and praise the Lord like you do, you're going to have to start acting like it and being a better influence in front of them, especially at church if they're here. They're not going to learn anything if you're just stiff and and not raising your hand. Now, I'm not talking about people who can't understand because sometimes I had to sit down. The, you know, the Lord has blessed me with several diseases and illnesses, but I thank God for them, and I thank him for any time that I could be a better example, you know, because somebody's got it worse than me. I know somebody's got it worse than me, but that's all right because I'm going to keep praising the Lord. I'm going to keep raising my hands for him. So if they can sing that one more time, I'm going to show you what I was doing over there if you didn't see it. If it help you to close your eyes while you do it, go ahead. Nothing wrong with it.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All day, every day, and every day, all day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Try to remember to hold the microphone. I got scriptures for you today. The Lord has blessed you to make it easy. The old school way was give you some scriptures and preach on from there. We're not going to give you, I think I counted about 19 scriptures. I said even <laughs> for this and the Lord said, no, we're going to do it the old fashioned way. I only give them what I tell you. First scripture, first Corinthians three and six. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians three and six. When you have it, say amen. I have planted. Apollos watered, but God, but God gave the increase. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for allowing us to come into your house of worship, Lord. Thank you for all the people that have made it here today, young and old, Lord. Maybe feeble, Lord, that's all right. Oh, maybe athletes, that's all right. But Lord, we thank you for the strength to be here today, Lord. We ask our word that comes from you. To bring us through everything that we've been going through. Whether we brought it on ourselves or somebody brought it to us, Lord. We ask a blessing from you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Okay. Y'all going to help me. Y'all going to have to help me. When I lay the mic down, say, pick the mic back up. Okay. Okay. The title of this sermon today is Small Potatoes, Big Taste. Small, I'm sorry for you people that are expecting BAM. It's Small Potatoes, Big Taste. At least I did maybe put something, a flavor into it. It's not ribs, but thank God, even for potato. Small Potatoes, Big Taste. <clears throat> I'll tell you uh, what happened is I've been getting into this this uh, thing with uh, roasting potatoes, red potatoes especially, and I've never done baby potatoes, but I've eaten some baby potatoes, kind of come in a can with green beans and stuff, you know, you boil, but I'm a roasting type person. I like roasted chicken and roasted turkey legs and I like roasted potatoes. And usually you gotta, we've always cut them up, in, in, in the bigger potatoes, and put them in the oven and stuff, and, and let them roast and season and everything. But I wanted to do some baby potatoes. And uh, it's a little more expensive too, you know. But that's all right, God provides, God bless. So I realized, you know, it's something about that, that scripture. It reminds me about the roasted potatoes. In that scripture, it tells you. It tells you about Paul. It tells you about Apollos. It tells you about God. It tells you about, you know, cultivating and growing and having something come out that's tremendous. And God is the only one that can do that. But he needs, well, actually, he don't need us. But he wants us to work, you know, as those laborers, you know. We've always heard the harvest plenty, the laborers are few. That's because it's, it's, it, it, it's not so much that the laborers are few. It's that we don't, we, we don't have people that want to labor. We don't want to go by what? Instructions. We want to keep on driving until we get it right. Even though we passed our exit 
40 miles back. We don't want to stop. We don't want, we don't want direction from anybody. We think we know it all. And, and I don't say it's men because I know that's, that's the stereotype. It's men that do it. But I'm sorry, it's women too because I know a lot of women that drive by themselves and they get lost, okay? And I know a lot of men the same way. So it's, it's all of us. We don't, we don't like instruction. And here God is, is giving Paul information and, and to preach. And here we are. One has to plant the seed. One has to water it. Okay? Then leave it alone. It's not any of their business. Just like when I took those potatoes, those baby potatoes, and I asked Sister Josephine to help me because, and that was the day after morning service. That was today. I wanted to cook. Even though I was tired, I was weak, okay, the Lord put that on my heart, put that on my mind. And I didn't understand why in the beginning, but I do now. It's about instruction. There's certain things you have to do first. First, you got to buy them at the store, you know, and then you got to bring them home, take them out the bag, you know, and then you got to clean them. You got to wash them off, rinse them, use water, you know, wipe them off. Then you got to have a pan big enough for them. And I'm talking about not cut up. I'm talking about keeping them just like they are, baby potatoes. See, some people want to cut them up still, even though they're so small. And that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what I was seeing. What I was seeing, little round potatoes in a pan, roasted. But then you need some oil on the base, the foundation there, to put those potatoes on. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? They're going to stick. They're going to burn. You've been crying. Woo, you know, all these different things that come to mind why, you, why this happened. It's because you don't like following instructions, first of all, like a lot of us. And here it is. Somebody's planting a seed. Somebody's watering. And you know the other thing we can't do? We can't wait. We can't wait on God. And some of us can't wait on those baby potatoes to be ready when it's supposed to be. We take them out early. Oh, this one's good. And they try the one on the outer edge. Don't, listen, young people that's just learning how to cook, don't try the ones on the outer edge. Try the ones in the middle, see, because it's, it, it, it's a little harder. It takes a little longer for those ones in the middle to get done. It's easy for those ones around the edge that heat gathers, unless you've got some really fancy, expensive uh, cookware. And, and that's fine. I still wouldn't trust it. I still want to check those ones in the middle. So, so what you do is you got that oil and you got your potatoes. Now, you can do two, one, two, two ways. You can put your potatoes in the bowl, season them, put your rosemary, put your, your uh, lemon pepper, black pepper, cayenne pepper. You can uh, put your kosher salt. You can put um, the lorries seasoning. And, and you can mix them up and put some, put some more rosemary and some thyme. Put a little thyme and try it out. Try a little sage if you want to. Experiment sometime. Listen, if, if you're a godly person, you believe in trusting God, you're going to ask God's blessing on the food so it don't bring you no harm. Don't be scared like Peter. Peter was scared. You see, he, he didn't want to eat with a, with a, with, with, with a Gentile. He, you know, but that's all right. God gave you instructions. You go ahead and do it. No matter what. So here the instruction is, and I got the, got the uh, potatoes. Just really asked me to come in, season everything, and uh, we put them in the pan. So she's my mixer. So she's going to mix them all up. We didn't mix them in a bowl separate. We mix it on in the pan with the oil. That's even better because then your seasons stick better with the oil in there. You know, her hands might be all messy and, and whatnot. You know, I'm not going to let her touch me. You know, let, hey, go on, put some water on. You know, <laughs> I love you too. But anyway, so I go ahead. <laughs> The oven has been heating up at 350 degrees. So then the next step is we have to put them in the oven. So I put them on in the oven. And then I go ahead and, and sit down, lay down, because I'm a little tired. I have to take medicine and stuff. You know, it, it's a blessing still, believe me. And about 35 minutes, that's what it takes, about 35 minutes at 350. Now, you lower, you lower the temperature, the longer it's going to take. The higher you, you, you set it, well, it's a little dangerous. Don't, don't, don't try to do fast. Don't try to do fast. Don't try to do fast. See, God gives us instruction. He also gives us instruction about being faithful. 
having faith, having patience, being obedient. See, this is God is teaching us a lesson in baby potatoes, small potatoes. And see, then when it's all said and done and it comes out the oven, that's not it. They're ready. Josephine is even testing. I said, Josephine, get a toothpick. Try the ones in the middle. She said, okay. So she tried. She said, it's good. It's good. I said, okay. I said, let them rest. Let them rest. Some of us get so fast and excited, you know, and we want, we want the next step to be done. We're ready to put them in our mouths. And those things are piping hot. And another thing is they're still actually cooking. Even though they're out of the oven and on top of the stove, they still are marinating in the seasoning. God is still working on us. See? See? Because there's going to be a season for us, and God is going to expect things from us. He don't need things from us, but he's going to expect it because he's had you cultivate the land, water it, seed it, and everything that you're supposed to do. Okay? And then there's going to come a time when, he, when, when it's through. And then the end product is going to grow. See, a lot of us have to grow into what God wants us to be, wants us to do, wants us to see, wants us to talk about, wants us to walk about. You know, we don't understand. We want everything what? Microwave. I think the microwave is the, and I don't want to be a hypocrite about this. I, I've always thought microwaves was terrible. I hate that they took away the steamer pot. They used to have a steamer pot where you could put your buns in, put a little water under it, and it had a sex, uh, 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 another pot inside of it. So the steam would come up from the water, heat your hot dog buns up, your hamburger buns. You know, now it's all microwave. They've taken away a lot of those things. You know, sometimes we, we, we don't want to be patient enough. And the thing is, it's not so much patience, but faith in God that he's teaching us right, that he's doing right. If we just read the scriptures, follow his commandments, see? But our problem is we want that big taste right now. We want what God's got to give us right now. Instead of uh, God's way, he, we want to do it our way. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says that God don't operate the same way. His thoughts is his thoughts, and his, 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 his ways is his ways, see? And it's not the same as ours. His ways is not our ways. His thoughts is not our way. But it's his own. And he's great. And he's perfect at it. But we don't believe it. So we try to turn the kitchen oven up a little faster. We try to get them out a little quicker. And we try to pop them in our mouth a little faster. And it burns us. It burns us. That's, the, that's just like the word of God. The more instructions we don't follow, the more we're going to get burnt. And in the end, you either go a nice, comfortable, cool place to hang out in heaven, or you're going to go somewhere down below where you're going to get burnt all day long, 24-7. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not hard. Let me, let me give you another scripture. Just two more scriptures left. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. 7 and 14. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, <coughs> shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Instruction. God is instructing us from the Old Testament to the New Testament what we need to do. We don't want to follow that. We want that land to be healed already. See, y'all want it so bad you taste, you taste it, but you don't really taste it. It's not a good taste because you didn't follow instructions. See, he said, humble yourself. My mama used to always tell me, when she was alive, she used to tell me, when I was young, I had too much pride, you know. And she, and she was right. It hurts to say that part. She was right. I did have a lot of pride. 
but my pride was 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 directed toward you know my family and and being there for them and and taking up for them and and you know and showing that I can do it and I didn't need help I didn't need nobody but that wasn't the truth as I got older and I started going to church and I started learning you need Jesus you need Jesus now the problem was was it, sometimes you hear people outside in the world who claim to be Christians shouting it at you, saying you need Jesus. But that's not how God tells you to do He says what? Be humble. See, there's no humility in pridefulness. You can't be humble if you're prideful. See, it says to pray. Pray. Now, I know everybody here can't get on their knees and pray. But you can find a place to pray. I don't care if you're at McDonald's working. You can, you can pray at McDonald's. You can pray in your car. Keep your eyes open. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. You can still pray. You can, and that prayer is just as good as going into your secret closet. Your secret closet doesn't have to be a physical box like that. It could be the box that you put around yourself mentally. See? And talk to God at all times. Keep him with you. Let the devil, don't be afraid to say the word devil. Don't be afraid to say the devil is a liar. I do it almost every day. Devil, you're a liar. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Pray. 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 Seek God's face. Seek the Lord's face. Seek his face. That's all. We got humble. Be humble. See, it's got to start somewhere because you won't seek God's face if you don't start to be humble. You won't pray if you don't start to be humble because you think you're too much for all that and you're too good for that. Oh, you don't want to do it your way. Oh, I can do it my way. That's what you tell yourself. Oh, if I just do this this time, then I'll go to church. Oh, if I can just get this, this shirt, I'm going to wear this, get this new collar shirt. I saw it on sale. Okay, I'll get it this Sunday. I'll go next Sunday. No, come as you are. That's what God said. Come as you are. We don't want to obey instructions. See? We, keep want, we want the big taste before, you know, we understand. We got to put the small potatoes out there first and get that right. See? And the only way you're going to get that right is through who? Jesus Christ. The third scripture is John 3 and 16. The Lord sent his begotten son, the one that he loved so much and dear, that he also put himself in the flesh and came down to earth to be with us, to show us that he's going to take all those burdens away from us. And here we are, we're trying to do it ourselves again, see, because we want that big taste. We wanna, we're so proud, we want to tell God and show God in the world that we created the big taste, that we discovered the big taste, that we are the big taste. And the thing is, is that God has got to work on you through Jesus Christ and show you the way to come a small potato with a big taste. Because if he doesn't, you can't help anybody. You can't help yourself. You can't help your family. You can't help your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. No one. All because you're trying to be the big taste without God. God's going to give you the big taste. But you got to be the small potato right now. And it's not just you being a small potato. It's about all your situations in life and problems. They small potatoes. That's the saying when I grew up with, even. They small potatoes. It's no, in other words, it wasn't no big deal for, for, for guys to hang out and, and talk about what they're going to do. It's all, oh, man, small potatoes. Don't, don't even worry about that. I'll get you a filter for your, your car, you know, or some oil. That's, that's no big deal. We got you covered, brother. We got you, you know. And, and it was some other things that we used to do and, and say we got each other covered. But, 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 but I don't want to bring those things up because they was bad. <laughs> it, it wasn't as nice as, as getting some parts for a car. And, but I thank God he pulled me away from that. See? See? And those problems you had with your finances, with sickness and broken bones, with cancer, with diabetes, with, with, with not knowing if you got enough hours on your job, to pay your rent or mortgage, you know, or, or, or if your child is going to be able to go back to school soon because they've been so sick, 
you know, we worry and stress over the smallest thing. But God has got those small things in hand. They're just small potatoes to him. Just like you know, hanging out with your friends, they're just small potatoes if they needed a dollar or two. You know, it was no big deal. God has got your back. God just wants you to follow those instructions. See, and our problem is we don't want to turn away from sin. See, that last part of 2 Corinthians 7 and 14, turn from your wicked ways. See, we, you know why we don't turn from wicked ways? Because it gives us pleasure. That's the bottom line. That's, that was my problem, my, my call to the ministry. I wasn't pleased with going to the ministry. It took four years more before I succumbed to God and asked him forgiveness and cried. You know, I'm a grown man, and I'm crying. See, men, we have to understand no matter how old you are, it's all right to cry. We got to get out of this. And some of you tougher women, it's all right to cry. Oh, we, oh, it's some tough women. Trust me, it's some tough women. You know, and I'm not going to get into no name call trying to embarrass nobody. That's not my job. That's not my job. My job is to let you and allow you to see what God is trying to show you through his scripture, through his word. Read it. Read it. Study it. If you don't know something, ask somebody for some help. Don't be scared. We got these phones. You can look up all kind of information. Now, you have to be careful, of course, of what you look up. Because I don't care what nobody say, the Internet is not always right. Okay? And you hear that all the time. Oh, it, it came off the Internet. It must be right. No. No. Don't believe it. Even Wikipedia. You know, people get in there and change information. So you have to be careful about who you ask. I would come to the church. Ask the pastor. You know, ask some of his ministers. You know, we have, we have a lot of ministers here. You know, and we have a lot of people in the pews that know the word of God. Enough to help you out if you feel more comfortable with them. We're not telling you to go somewhere and, and ask somebody that's abusive or going to hit you or talk bad about you. Ask somebody that will help you. It may be one of your friends. Get, get together with them when you can. Talk to each other. See? But we got to follow these instructions. If we want a bigger and better taste that God is trying to provide for us, if we want to grow, and blossom into a beautiful tulip, rose, or whatever the plant is that you like. I like irises. I bet none of you knew that except for Josephine. Since Josephine knew that, she goes, I love irises. And I don't know why, but it, it just made me tear up. And, you know, I get excited, you know. Y'all say, is he a woman? No, I'm not a woman. I'm a, I'm a man with feelings that Christ also had compassion and feelings also. That don't make me less of a man. That means we like, I like the beauty that God provides for us. And if you like that beauty and that great taste that God provides, you're going to do it his way. Because in the end of that scripture of 2 Chronicles 7 and 4, he said that he will heal your land. That's the taste you've been waiting for. No more sickness, no more dying, no more crying. No more weeping, wailing, moaning, groaning, complaining, being angry, being stressed, having heart attacks, dying of cancer, broken bones, limbs, worried about the job every day. Even when you're not at the job, I don't bring my job home. Those fintations, we don't hardly ever talk about my job. Because I don't bring it home. You know? But I think about God everywhere I go at home and at work, and I find joy in it, and I thank the Lord for it. God has given us instruction. What are you going to do to get that big taste that you want so badly? Are you going to wait on God, or are you going to do it your way? Amen. God bless you. In the Lord good, let me just say, when you talk about food, you minister to me, brothers. I'm just going to tell you. As I've told you before, Julie has established that if preaching doesn't work out, I can always describe food for a living. But he, he was talking, Brother Oscar, specifically about prematurely because of our appetite, not waiting on it, not waiting for it. And I, I will tell you, years ago, Julie and I, 
there wasn't her job and my job. It was our job. So whoever got home first started supper, got kids on homework, threw clothes in the washer. I hear about all these 50-50 marriages. Unless you're 100-100, you ain't going to make it. It's going to take everything you got. And uh, I had fallen in love, Sister Tracy, with these new au gratin potatoes. Maybe you've heard of those. They come in a box. And we'd had them several times, and Julie had done the fixing, and I did the eating. And I said, oh, that sounds so good, and I think I'm going to fix them. And me being the hyper-creative person that I am, if you can cut out a step and make it faster, can, can I get a witness? I'm a multitasker. I can do this. See, you're supposed to boil those potatoes and then drain most of the liquid off and then add the cheese sauce. I wanted to cut out a step. It's been a long time ago, Randall, a long time ago. But I, I put that in there, and you know what? It never became what it was supposed to be. Actually, Sister Anna, it was kind of nauseate. I'm, I'm being real. And when the word says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and you consume the word and it nauseates you, Nothing wrong with the word. You're just not following the directions. Let, let me go a little, am I okay? Let, let me add just a little bit to that. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee. No, he's got directions. Submit to God. Then resist the devil. When the disciples could not cast out the devils. Come on, Sister Linda, help me preach this morning. When they tried to cast him out and couldn't cast him out, Jesus says, how long am I going to suffer you? You know what? I have a revelation. They had not yet submitted to the authority of God. I don't know about you. I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to let him keep working on me. It's a process. Anybody here over 51? Then you're older than me. I want to get a witness from somebody older than me. Is he still working on you? Is he still working on you? He's still working on me. I'm going to stay where he's got me. I want to stand under the mighty hand of God till he does a complete work. I got the message, Brother Randall. You touch me. But I would be remiss. I'm, we're not going to hold you much longer. But I believe I asked my friend, Brother Doyle, I said, Brother, you got just a little something you can put on this. I don't know about you. I like icing on my cake. I like leaves on my tree. And Brother Randall has given us something to really begin to evaluate in our lives. I just feel an unction of the Holy Ghost. My brother's just got something specifically from the Lord move in the spirit tonight for just a minute. I don't want us to leave here tonight that the word of God is not confirmed. That through the man of God who doesn't know you like I do or Brother Randall knows, he can speak a word and you can know that's from God for me. Now, if you went to a concert and the concert was about over and you stood up and clapped and applauded and they'd already gone off the stage, how good would you feel they come out and sang another 11 songs for the same ticket price? We got our money's worth. I know we got a wedding shower, but they're not going anywhere till they get their gifts. And they're not getting their gifts till we get through it here. Who wants some bonus tonight? Who wants, who wants an encore of God? Brother Doyle, I want you to come. Speak to us. Challenge us. I'm not going to take you... Uh too long tonight. Um, can y'all stay with me 20 minutes? Can y'all stay with me just 20 minutes? Um, um, Brother Randall uh, uh, made me aware of something I didn't know, and then it revealed, he says, about you tough women out there. There's some tough women out there, so I got a message for you tough women. If you have your Bible, turn to Luke. And then I, I told the pastor, I said, 
a woman have a child. That's, that's tough there. That's tough. Luke, Dr. Luke, chapter 17, verse 27. It's 10 minutes after 7. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. You say you got some people getting married? I didn't know that. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It said that everything was as normal. As of routine, people getting up and going to work, getting married, uh, having children, it was as usual. And it's going to be the same way when the Lord comes back. That everybody's going to be going around uh, getting married and having children, working and doing the things that we do, and the Lord is going to come. And he's going to come the hour that nobody expects. He's going to come when everything is as usual. You're doing the same old, same old thing over and over. And the Lord is going to come. And uh, coinciding, uh, I say, remember Lot's wife. That's the title. Remember Lot's wife. Uh, Abraham, her grandfather, her father-in-law, or uncle-in-law, had interceded, prayed, and asked the Lord if there'd be 50 righteous people in Sodom that would he spare. And he knew it wasn't. But he started a number. He began to work down would you spare it for 45? Would you spare it for 40? Until he got the Lord, Jude the Lord down to 10. If there be 10 righteous people in this whole city, would you spare it? And he was interceding for his nephew and his nephew's family, his wife, his daughters. And so here is Lot's wife. Does it mention Lot's wife's name? I don't, it doesn't mention her name. Just say Lot's wife. And so she had a man that was a friend of God interceding for her. And the Lord sent two angels to get them out of Sodom. Because Abraham had interceded, he prayed for them. Have you prayed for somebody that was lost? Have you prayed for somebody that was in a jam? Have you prayed for somebody that was in a terrible situation? But they never came out. See, they got to do something too. I don't care who you got that's praying for you. Lot's wife had Abraham praying for her, a friend of God. Father Abraham was praying for her, and God sent two angels 
to pull them out of Sodom. And they got him out. The two angels got him out. He got Lot, his two daughters, and Lot's wife. But as they went out, they were instructed, don't look back. Don't look back. And so as they went out, she made it out of the city. She had Father Abraham praying for her. She had two angels leading the way. She made it out of the city. And then she turned her head. Though she was out of the city and she was moving forward, she had escaped. But when she looked back, her mind, Though her body was moving forward, she looked back. And see, when she looked back, that told where her heart was. It told where her mind was. And she turned into a pillow of salt. A pillow of salt. And and the Bible says, remember Lot's wife. But God has not given me a spirit of fear, but he has given me a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And some of us may need to be frightened or scared to live for God. But that's not me. I live for him because I love him, because he first loved me. That's why I don't, ser- I don't serve him to avoid hell. I don't serve him because I want to make heaven. I serve him because he first loved me, and I love him. And so I would like to, five, I got four, I want to tell you, remember Boaz, his wife. Forget about Lot's wife. Remember Boaz's wife, Ruth, when Naomi's family had died. And her sons died, her husband and her sons and her two daughter-in-law. And they had nothing left. And so Naomi says to these tough women, Lot's wife wasn't tough enough. And Naomi says, go ahead and go back home. And one of them, Oprah, not Oprah Winfrey, but uh, and said that she kissed her, Naomi, and left. But Ruth grabbed her and cleaved to her, hung to her. She says, go with your sister-in-law. I'm too old, and I, I'll not ha- be able to have any sons again and be able to give you a husband. Uh, so go, but look what, look what she says. Uh, and she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Where thou dive, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do to me 
and more also, if aught but death separate, part thee from me. That's a tough woman. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Remember Boaz's wife, Ruth. She served because she loved. She didn't serve because she feared. I serve God because I want to please him. And if you'll please God, the hell and heaven issue is settled. If you just please God. And and so, you know the story how that, uh, and I'm rapping, it's up here, to be obedient to the pastor and not carry y'all too long. She's told her to go out in, in the field. And she went and gleaned in the field. You know what gleaming means? After everybody has went through the field, all the workers and all the laborers, you got to scratch all day long in the hot sun just to get enough for a meal that evening. All day. But she went from gleaming to owning the field. You glean for God, you may think you're just scratching up a living. You may be gleaming, but the God is going to give you the feel. He's going to give you the feel. Remember Boaz's wife, Ruth. Can we stand? Can we stand? I don't know where you're gleaming at tonight. But if you'll be faithful, if you'll be consistent, God will reward you. I've been gleaming in prisons. God put it on my heart. And you know, working, going into prison doesn't pay. The prisoners don't have offerings to give me. But I keep going. And I'm gleaming in those prisons because God has put that love in my heart. He's put that burden in my heart. And I've been gleaming. And I've been gleaming. And now I get paid three different ways for going into prisons. I get paid three different ways. I started out gleaming, and I was faithful. I was consistent. And God has given me the feel. And God will give you the feel. You may be in a field today, and you're scratching, it don't seem like you're getting enough. Just be faithful. Just ask for the blessings of God. He will cause it to multiply. This altar is open right now. And I would like to ask you to come and just tell the Lord, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to keep on believing for you. I'm going to keep on being faithful. It may not look like it's paying off, but I'm doing it because you love me, and I love you. Come on. Surely there's a work Come on, lay it out. Lay it out before the Lord tonight. Oh, God. We give you all the glory.
Hallelujah. If you're praying, you feel free. Brother Matt, I want you to come. I want you to stand out here. Brother Randall, you feel like coming down here and helping him pray. Amen. Come stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's got a breakthrough for some people tonight. Brother Dole, I want you to come and stand over here. Brother Randall, I want you to come and stand over here by Brother Matt. My brother's got a target on his back. He's like, oh my Lord, what have I got myself into? My brother has accepted a calling for prison ministry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus says you'll know my disciples by their compassion for those who are incarcerated. For the widows and the orphans and those who have no way to pay back. See, God wants to invest in people that have no resources themselves. And I just want to pray a spiritual covering over my friend tonight. Is that okay? An unction of the Holy Ghost calls him to find favor, open doors, give him a captive audience. Apostolic. Come on, Brother Oscar. You're feeling it, aren't you? Come on. I want you to help us pray. Come on. Help us pray. Who believes God's got revival in prison? Come on. Pray for him right now. Jesus, see my brother. God, empower him with your spirit. God, let not the bars prevent the flow of the Holy Ghost. God, let him find favor. Let the seed of your word fall on good ground. God, that you're going to do a complete work in him. They had no God, let that option that he needs to, to protect him, God, use him. God, he is your messenger. God, he is a blessing to those. Paul said, I know God's word is true. Let me tell you what we ought to do. Oh, well, Hallelujah. I think we ought to praise Hallelujah. all day long. Before we go, you guys stay close. Did you see the connection in the word? Don't give up too soon. Keep going. That's the biggest struggle people have. They either give up too soon or they quit going. I'm encouraged now, aren't you? Pastor, you're always encouraged. Yep, it's what you know. I'm encouraged because pastors need to be preached to. Heaven help us if we can only be excited about coming to church when we're preaching or we're singing. We're getting bragged on. Who loves the Lord? I just feel, just for another minute, anybody, you need prayer tonight. You need prayer tonight. You need prayer tonight. If you're just toying with it, you probably don't need prayer tonight. But when I said, if anybody needs prayer tonight, come, instantly you identify. Well, that's you. I want you to, I got Brother Howard coming right here. Anybody else need prayer tonight? Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay. Come on, pray for him right now. Here's the oil. Body, soul, or spirit. My brother needs a physical touch. Somebody. My brother asks very little, but right now he is called on the precious name of Jesus. God, let the faith needed be loosed in this place. God, let us believe you for your healing that's already been made available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Come on, stretch your hands right now. An impossible case. Surgeon says, I've got to operate, but I don't think you're going to make it. Doug's got a burden for his coworker. Who believes that God can touch him right now? brag on the goodness of the Lord for just a minute. Come on, let's pray for Vicki right now. Pray for her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see her humble spirit right now. God, her desire to reach out and hear from you. One more coming. Would you help us pray? Do it. Do it. Who believes God can bless Sister Josephine even now? Come on, believe it. Jesus, Jesus. God, even now, give her strength. God, give her protection and wisdom. God, help her even now with all the weight that's on her. God, all the responsibility that she carries even now. Lord, speak a word to her mind. my God. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 